We continue looking at ministerial portfolios which have new ministers and particularly have ministers that come from outside of the ANC. South Africa's agri-sector is what we discuss with SA agri-economist Wandile Sislobo. Wandile, good afternoon. Good afternoon, John. Thanks for having me on. We've had a succession. I don't know how many ANC agriculture ministers we've had since 1994, but there has, there has been more than four that I could remember. Again, it, it leads one to the question of how much the minister matters. We now have um, an opposition minister. Well, he's now a member of the Government of National Unity, but previously opposition. So, I mean, how much power does John Steenhuisen have to set a policy agenda for agriculture that is going to find favour with the rest of his cabinet colleagues? I, I, I think, John, it, it would be inappropriate uh, for me to say how much power he has. But what I will say, though, is this. Uh, what is more important is the policy that will actually be guiding the department as well as the programs. If one, for example, takes a step back and look at what the ANC has been doing, as well as what it says in its manifesto, particularly on the agricultural side, And then you cross-reference that with what the DA is saying about purely agriculture. There's a lot of similarities. And I would say the ideas there, although not uh, explicitly stated in both of them equally, but they draw inspiration on Chapter 6 of the National Development Plan. And I think that they are aligned with what we've been talking about as agriculture and agro-processing master plan. So if we take that as a premise, which is the story of saying, let's grow and build a competitive and inclusive agricultural sector, addressing challenges value chain by value chain um, and region by region, whatever the challenges that are there, which we have already stated in the agriculture and agro-processing master plan, like uh, animal diseases, infrastructure issues, and need to utilize um, and use land fully to build a new class of commercial black farmers. So if all of those things are done, and both of these parties are agreeing uh, uh, that those should be priority, and I would think that's more fundamental, and I think that it then matters less on what else uh, is there. But I, but I think on the policy side, there, there is a large agreement. And that, for me, makes a case for saying even the current Minister of Agriculture, I think he, he will do well if he pursues those, as he has stated in several uh, interviews that I have managed to hear. Yeah, I appreciate that you want to talk more about policy than about personality, but those things on which the ANC and the DA seem broadly to be in agreement on um, out of the National Development Plan and the Master Plan for Agriculture and Agro-Processing, that doesn't seem to me as um, an admittedly often ignorant observer to have been happening terribly much over the last five years, just to to take the last um, government term. So if, if it is going to start to happen or accelerate the happening thereof, then it is it is down, is it not, to to personality and practice if policy is already agreed? John, I'm going to push back um, uh, on that Okay. uh, for basic reasons, being that if you take a step back and you look at 1994 at where South Africa's agriculture was, and you compare with where we are today, this sector has more than doubled in value and in volume terms. And you ask the question to say, what has been behind all of that progress? One aspect of it is an improvement in productivity because of better seed cultivars that farmers are using, better genetics, all of that enabled by investments by private sector, as well as the regulators that are more open and embracing technology. The second catalyst is the private sector exporting more, but the South African government opening up the export markets to an extent that today, John, we are exporting about half of what we produce in value term. That's about $13.2 billion as of 2023. The only failure that we have had in the sector is that as this progress has happened, we have not been able to ensure that it is inclusive. You have black farmers still making up about 10% on average of the commercial output. So my sense is that now the administration has to ensure that they sustain this progress that we have made. And the added aspect of that then is to say what area still has the capacity and which land is underutilized can it be brought into full production at a commercial scale? 
and ensure that we build on his game. And when I have listened to Minister Sian uh, Hizen uh, making his case, I think he is really uh, aligned uh, with that particular view, which is why, again, I was saying my sense is that he will build on the gains that are there. And he has certainly talked about championing the agriculture and agro-processing master plan. And that builds on a ground that has certainly been a success. So, John, I, I think this is a sector that has seen enormous progress. Okay, Wandile, I, I, did acknowledge, I did acknowledge my ignorance. So I'm glad that you have lessened, my, lightened my ignorance just a little. Thank you, thank you, John. I do think that, John, uh, the, the one thing I would close off with on this is that on employment aspect, uh, which is why I appreciate why you're talking about this sector. This is an important sector. We have about 940,000 people that are working in primary agriculture and another 450 or so thousand people that are in the agro-processing. So adding that, that's somewhere between 8 and 9% of the total labor market and I think what's more exciting is an additional million jobs that could be there if we focus on expanding production at a primary level, but also attracting funds uh, for the agro-processing side, which is what that master plan seeks to do. I really do enjoy listening to you and reading you because I always feel better about our future once I have. Thank you very much indeed to uh, SA Agri-economist Wandile Sislobo.